Oh, it was beautiful to look at, like the cinematography. Oh yeah, like they got great shots, nice yeah. colors, colors. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Stop, dog. Stop. I know what <laughs> We've been sincere. I These are this is this is what we like. I know. <laughs> but I'm just like, like, I can't help how it sounds. Um, <laughs> when a nigga wait. starts saying, yo, this the colors. <laughs> yeah, man. Welcome to the viewing that show, y'all. It's that actor guy, Mr. Bats in the building. It was popping. It's your favorite host, Marty here. M A R T Y at which five zero four on Instagram, Twitter, and Snap a chat. It's your favorite host, <laughs> DC Paul. The like, millennial us in here. Yeah, who is DC Paul.com and who is DC Paul on all social media networks? And I'm here to review that show. Yeah, we ain't that reviewing that, bro. We reviewing that. We reviewing coming to America today. Mm -hmm. It's got our I know it got my timelines going nuts. It's like almost all that anybody's talking about is this is this skewing more positive or negative it's, or is it's, it somewhere it's in the back middle? and forth because it's a little bit all over the place it's in the middle okay yeah, it's back and forth right, right in the middle son it's i like, mean is it, it a was, generational you know thing? what's funny is 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 people who like it people who didn't like it people who like it who mad at the people who didn't like it people who didn't like it who mad at the folk who like won't let them not like it it's a it's, okay. a, it's more than it's more than just people okay. liking and disliking it's conversations What's your first initial thoughts and feelings on coming to America? Coming the number two America. <laughs> coming the number two. You know what I, mean? I enjoyed it, but I did not love it. I liked it, but I, 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 I didn't like first. it because it was a perfect, <laughs> a perfect film that had nothing wrong that I couldn't overlook. Um, and I hated the ending. We gonna get to that. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> what he hates about the ending is not what you most likely think. Oh, okay, okay. yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, I can guarantee you, it's not about the woman becoming queen. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but also, that was. Uh, we gonna get to, okay. but you know, that's not what you're specifically no, talking, about. What I'm talking about. What you saying, Marty? <laughs> fair enough. I um, I, I should have went first. I I, uh, I I agree with you. I did not. Li I like this one. I didn't love it, and um, I was just head over heels in love with the first one. You know mm. what I'm saying? And in terms of how I feel about, yeah, I just, I, I just, I liked it. You know, um, even on the second viewing, I found more things that I really, really in, uh, enjoyed. But um, overall, it was just, um, you know, I lowered my expectations. I, I felt like <laughs> you can't, you can't make a. Cl I don't know. I feel like you can't set out to make a classic based off of another classic. Mm -hmm. I just feel like that's kind of almost impossible. You know what I'm saying? And that's sort of where my expectations were when I first heard the idea. But as more time went on, I just sort of lowered them because I just figured they couldn't do that. But um, in terms of what they were able to put together, I, I, you know, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> what they were able to put together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What they were yeah. able to do with what they you know, had. They, you know, with the stuff that they had and the things that they did. You know. it's, it's a couple of things that you bring up there. One is when you said um, you can't set out to make a classic based off another classic. And yeah. it makes me think of one of the pitfalls of the movie, and we're going to get into all that later, but it just made me okay. think of one of the pitfalls of the movie is... It's one of the charms and the pitfalls, pitfalls at the same time. Okay. One of the charms <laughs> is some of the callbacks. You know what yeah. I mean? And if you are a fan of the last movie, you're going to see a lot of callbacks. Mm -hmm. One of the pitfalls is it seems like it hinges a lot of its comedy and story on the callbacks instead mm -hmm. of crafting their own narrative. You feel me? Um, I think Best mm -hmm. Man 2 did it better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Okay. We had the callbacks. <laughs> Yes, but they indeed. still brought forth something a new to the table, story, new, so it was didn't able lose the authenticity of it and didn't rely on the predecessor. But it still sh shouted them out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It, yeah, it was one absolutely. of those things of like, so it's not like it can't. We've not seen it done. We mm -hmm. we saw it directly done. It's the same situation. An old type title went back, made a sequel that we weren't I necessarily about the best man sequel. That's a perfect <laughs> way to, to 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 give a classic a sequel. That mm -hmm. was a good one. And then that was a holiday movie. It was a holiday movie. So they they was able yeah. to flip a bunch of ways and make it different that's in a bunch indeed. of ways dog um but like yeah it's overlooked like so that when you bring it up that's what you make me think about but yeah. also um you also bring up coming to america part one and that should have been my first question to y'all of like where where y'all like wh how did that movie affect you because i was selling dc off mic I didn't grow up with coming to America one. That's oh wow, that's really? funny. I, you know, okay. I'm, I'm black in the black. I just seen yeah. majority of classics, but 
I, I, I gave it a chance late in life. Like, I probably was maybe in high school by the time I finally saw Coming to America, for real. And yeah. I liked it. Right, But right. that's a different... That's a different oh, foundation wow. than someone yeah. who grew up with it since they were six, seven, eight, twelve. Mm -hmm. Watched every yeah. time it came on USA or TNT or BET. You know what I mean? Coming to America, that was one of the first VHSs that we owned, and we had a VCR player before everybody else on the block. So they would come to our house to watch the new Eddie Murphy movie. Yeah, Coming to America, and I mean, I'd have done a Randy Watson scene on stage at class night. I, uh, I can pretty much quote the movie from beginning to end. And it's iconic yeah. like that in Black Family. That's why yeah. I said, I know I'm weird about, like, I'm the anomaly of, as being a, as a, is, being a, a black odd. dude. I, I, I that, that, that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm the anomaly there. So, but that's also why my, my expectations were naturally lower than most oh, people's, I think. Okay. I didn't go in okay. with that with that, that that bias of they better get this right, they better get Because even if you didn't have yeah. it that you said out loud, it's still it's still naturally there when you're seeing a sequel from some beloved from your from your nostalgic life, your mean childhood. Yeah. So it was like I went in kind of more objective. So I I, I <laughs> but it, I still echo y'all sentiments though. It's like yeah, okay. I don't love it, but I don't hate it, and I see the flaws, but the flaws aren't so bad that because there's some movies that are so flawed that. I can't watch the motherfucker. Can't enjoy it. I can't enjoy it. Yeah. I can't like nothing about it. It's like, oh, I don't want to sit through this again. And that's mm -hmm. not what was happening. Like right. DC said, I was entertained. Even if it's not mm -hmm. something I'm going to you know, say, hey, you got to guess this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I still was entertained. But mm -hmm. like, I can't help but, but I can't, I also can't help but the fact of, I, I like me and DC was talking about this before. Two things. One, I'm an artist, so I'm gonna have my own artist gaze about it. Whether I'm looking at it as a writer or as an actor or as a director myself, a piece of me can't help but if there's technical flaws with anything, I'm going to see technical I flaws. See I'm not gonna okay. watch it trying to trying to nitpick those things, but it's almost impossible for me to even watch it with my consumer eyes and not see mm -hmm. if a plot hole happened. You know what I mean? And be yeah. affected by it. In, in some way. Now, I will forgive it because I think one big thing is gauging your expectations. I don't go in um, I don't put on Lil Wayne expecting to hear Kendrick Lamar. You feel me? Some people went okay. in this motherfucker and went into a PG-13 um, sequel of 30 years later expecting the 1980s rated R film. You can't do that and that's where you're going to be fucked from the beginning as far as I'm yeah. concerned. I mean, okay. you didn't have to make it a the rated R movie in 2021 but there's some things they could have did to to hold on to the authenticity of the original yeah. true or even um if they would have kept it r they wouldn't have made a family movie and of them making it a family movie i think yeah. uh took away a lot from what made the original so so magical and i mean Again, that's some of the things I love about the movie, like it proving how powerful and talented Eddie Murphy is, and I mean the uh, the costumes and hair, the melanin, all of them do the thing. You know, the, the legends we saw in the movie, and that's the part yeah. I, I gotta throw too. I'm gonna have a black bias in watching this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and so, and it's, and it's gonna be uh, skewed toward the positive. Through the positive, right? But I want to say yeah. something about what you said um, of he made a family movie. Yeah, coming to America was not that. Nope. And I say so. so when you go into it, you got to take that in. That's a very good point. You feel what I'm saying? Of yeah. The first movie was just meant to be a a, a comedy, a, a black comedy, mm -hmm. or just a comedy. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, a comedy, raunchy dirty, comedy. Dirty, you know what yeah, I'm saying? It was, Wasn't meant to be blue. for the kids. Right. Yeah. This was like you said. It feels <laughs> like this is what Eddie Murphy is now in his life. Mm -hmm. That was made 30 years ago. That was that Eddie's perspective. Yeah, I don't know how, how old his children were at that time, but now at this. He got a child that's in the movie. So Come he on. Has to, like, he, under, he has a different perspective. Yes, mm -hmm. and I feel like even, even some of the jokes is like dad jokes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying about the movie. It's like, this is a corny-ass movie, but it's a <laughs> likable <laughs> corny-ass movie. Yeah. It's, it's really dad jokes. That's what the deal is. We went from raunchy jokes of like... like some in, the, the movie young... matured in those 30 years and came out with the sequel. No, the know, person matured. The person, whatever. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. But it's like just that whole, the whole energy, everything was different. Like you mentioned that now and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I was too young to be watching this when mm -hmm. I watched it. The all first, the all of them. Bro, so okay. Samuel Jackson by in, himself in, in the first movie dropped so many f bombs <laughs> in that McDowell's in one scene. In that one scene, anybody move, I'll blow your fucking head off. What are you looking at, buddy? It would be wise for you to put the weapon down. 
Who the fuck is this asshole? Please refrain from using any further obscenities in the presence of these people. What? I've warned you. I'll be forced to thrash you. Fuck you! They, they, he drops him in the F-bombs, he ain't bringing bring him back for the second movie. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't. <laughs> they couldn't. <laughs> but I remember, I, remember, I remember going to the video store with my cousins and my aunt. And I remember us renting Coming to America, like right when it first came out on VHS. And we went over to their house in the East, and, uh, and we went and we sat down and we watched it. And we would eat, maybe get like 10 minutes into it. I would even argue to say maybe not even five minutes into it. Because uh, immediately at the bathing scene in the very beginning, my aunt walks in and, say, and shuts the movie off. And when my uncle comes home, he, he tells him, they had naked people yeah. on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, like, I've seen this movie already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, see, we didn't even get to the good part. <laughs> right. And I'm just like, okay. So we, we had to watch fucking Care Bears or some shit. But it's just like that... Like thinking back on that, it's like, oh yeah, you really were just a little too young to be watching this. And this was for everyone. This, this was for yeah, it's a different, yeah. it's a whole different feel. Like they know your kid, the kids are gonna try to watch this. Mm, there so were no f bombs in this one, dude. It's uh, PG, like it's PG thirteen, but you know, it's it's, it's, it's kind of PG compared to the eighties. A couple of Leslie <laughs> yeah. Jones's uh, scenes and lines were a little. Adults. Oh, the, yeah. Oh, the, uh, as as some, close some, to the line as you could probably But it's like get. what you first said. You can easily watch this with your teen, preteen yeah, kids. Mm -hmm. and, and you, you wouldn't have to explain too much. Like, mm -hmm. oh, like, oh, what's that? Well, mm -hmm. or, or cover eyes or ears. Mm -hmm. Question. Did y'all notice, did y'all watch the, the, the bloopers at the end, right? Do y'all get the impression from, like, that little clip that we got of Morgan Freeman's speech where he actually said nobody fucked anymore, but in the actual movie it says nobody had, had sex, sex anymore. anymore. Do you think there's like a raw cut of this somewhere? Like a oh, R-rated cut? Like with alternate takes? With all with of fucks those and shit people in, in this wish. film. Me too. It would be amazing if there was an R-rated take that he's just waiting to drop. Yeah, That's what I, I, would, I, would, I don't think so either, but... I, I, yeah. That would be smart, I feel though. like he has it in his that boat somewhere. That would be somewhere. so smart. That would be the version that gets released on Blu-ray and DVD. Is the, is the oh, ultimate oh, but, version. but what if? But think. But when I'm looking at this whole story, this was even like the story itself was even some family-oriented shit. Yeah, it was. So I feel like anything that exists like that would be the actors riffing. They might not have it in any. Like it's not like an already story could have come from this. No, you know no, no. Saying? But I mean, a few scenes were. They're gone. That's why I feel. Could, I feel like there's yeah. some. What you're saying, alternate scenes of an actor just. Especially something like a Morgan Freeman, like a yeah. Wesley Snipes, like you know what I mean, just going in. But some more, some more dirty content. Some dirty content. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's dirty content, but is it enough to make a whole another version? You can Who do knows? the same movie, just give just us, just, just give us a dirty a, version. Yeah. Yeah. Just give us those slight <laughs> tweaks. Give me some fucks and some, some, some a couple niggas. I ain't heard no niggas in the movie. Yeah, I give me a lot, couple I, niggas. A lot of I niggas heard, in the I heard, movie too. Yeah, I only hear like okay. one. <laughs> niggas all up and through the movie. I can hear one of them. Shit. So, um, this movie itself, story-wise, it felt like a movie out of time for me. Um, it didn't feel like a 2021 movie. It felt like a 2010 or 2005 movie. Man, you feel me? I think that the movie... <clears throat> I kind of agree, kind of disagree with that because the movie is so many times said, we're in 2021 now. So yeah. many times <laughs> it said that. Like, yeah. when they went to barbershop, he was like, I got a, I got a granddaughter. He used to be a grandson. They could turn yeah. a baby into a vagina uh, Yeah, those... The, were, those were, I mean, so the many, story like, well, structure. Yeah, sure, sure, you know what I mean? Right. The whole level yeah. of... You know what I mean? Because it's basically the Fresh Princess of Munda. You know what I mean? The whole fresh out of water kick. And uh -huh. My nigga was trying for some Will Smithisms. I don't know if y'all saw it, but I saw yeah. the Will Smith that he was going for at times. But, yeah. um, like, yeah, and it's like, you know, he yeah. comes there, he has the little jokes, and I'm so black, and we got to show our blackness, our extra, yeah. and it's, it's old. I'm so black, I'm too black for this royal shit, and now he got to figure out how to be more esteemed, but then he realized he just could just be his, his own natural be, self. How many, and how, many, make, how many movies is, is that the point of it? Bro, be, be just be yourself. all through the 90s and 2000s, especially the black version of that, yeah, yeah, because right. that goes back decades, yeah, goes period. Up. But I the black version of... We had to teach the kids. Beans, to how would you say? That's what the original coming to America was about. Mm -hmm. Like because Simi, instead of going in, I mean, Akeem instead of going in, into this arranged marriage, decided to follow his heart and find true love, and then he changed the traditions of Samoa. Yeah, so that's I that's guess, the yeah, movie. Yeah, they're, they're telling us the same movie again, and they're not even you know ashamed of it. No, and that's right. fine because they they, they, they two make parts fun of themselves. They made in a the same breath. Yeah, because they, they they had the nerve and crack that joke about not making sequels. I know when they it. But like I'm still saying they made a reboot at the same time as making a sequel. Because if you just put this off of somebody and say, this part one, little kid, like Lion King. <laughs> like, yeah, right. This is the Lion King I think a child, coming to America remake. A child watching this for the first time could just enjoy the original story. 
this without, story. Yeah, without seeing the first the original movie. I and, think so. And they just have their own jokes and they won't mm-hmm. get none of the things we get and they just gonna rock with it. But like... I think they have better movies they can watch now. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, but there's also worse. Because that's one of the things yeah, I was saying too, enough. dog. Like oftentimes, we don't... Ju- when we judge our movies hard. We, we, yeah. it's like, if it's, if it's not all things black to all people, it's trash movie. It's whack. Don't watch it. And I'm like, there's no piece of art that can do that. And we don't do that to our white ca- counterparts. Adam Sandler wouldn't have a career, motherfucker, if every one of his movies was judged to the, the utmost esteem of Citizen Kane or fucking, you know what I mean, Godfather. You heard me? Right. But for whatever right. reason, black people, oftentimes we do that. We do that to our movies. You heard me? If the, if, if the movie just cool, it's trash. Oh, it was cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think we can put out cool shit. Yeah, dog. And like, I, I wish we weren't that hard on ourselves about it, man. I remember people used to say it, it was cool for what it was. You know, some shit could just be cool for what it is. And, and, like and this movie being cool for what, for it, what it is. And, 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 and I can't, and there's so many sides of it. It's okay. It's the level of not wanting to judge it so hard, like giving it the guilty before it's proven innocent, you know what I mean, off the dump. Because sometimes we go in thinking it's going to be bad. But then on the other yeah. side, I don't want to come and coddle our films because then, you know what I mean, our shit ain't going to be as good as it can be. You know what I mean? so much we, we do that to black films, but a lot of black people who consume a lot of black art, or at least art that is, that is uh, marketed toward them. So you kind of have your own bit of expertise about black films. You've seen so many of them. You mm-hmm. can, you're able to criticize and say what you didn't like about this latest one. You know, now I don't think just because you it, it wasn't the best one you've seen makes it trash. I think that needs to stop in general. I feel like we need better vocabulary and yeah, expressing, oh, and explaining how, what we like and what we absolutely. don't like about yeah. our art. Because when people jump to the notion of trash, it just and also throws we need it to all understand away. the current language. You know, people use hyperboles like that. You know, like um, people say trash, but really, what you meant was it wasn't your favorite. But yeah. I think I think yeah. we need. I, I think I, I, certain hyperboles I fuck with, and certain ones. We need to do way with yeah because because so that's so some extreme. Of them are, some of them are absolute. Some yes, are, that's know, what I'm saying. Like, when like, like, come on, now, it ain't trash. That's now. what I'm <laughs> saying. I think that's my point, dog. Like when it's an absolute. In hyperbole, it does way more damage because if a nigga just sell your movie trash, you won't even watch it half the mm-hmm. time, and it might have some for it for mm-hmm. you. And niggas could you know? just say like, you know what? I didn't care for this, this, and that, but it was cool. But it was it cool. wasn't as good as the original. And some shit just not your cup of tea, and you could be like, it's not my cup, yeah, but you right. might fuck with it. Or even like my girl laughed at it, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that that means it's funny. Yeah. You some know, um, think it's shit. Funny. I didn't laugh, but I was in a room with people laughing. That says something. You like I said, we we need better vocabulary to explain, that. man, because I, I can't call this movie trash. No, what I say no. is fire because, like, like I said, that's been the conversation. They got the people who apparently love it. There's the people who seem to only love it because people hate it. There's the people who claim to hate it. The other people who only claim to hate it because there's other people who like it. And there's the people that's just like, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, and it's just, okay. it ain't gotta be that deep for this. <laughs> like, this, this ain't even that deep, bitch. You like, know, I mean, I, I feel like a lot of people deep. walked in with their investments from the first movie. True. And this movie wouldn't exist without the first, without the first movie and everybody's expectations yeah. after the first one because the first mm-hmm. one was a classic. So it, you, you can't act like you can't say it's hard it. to follow up from a classic. Yeah, you can't say watch it without those expectations because right. Right. I'm not saying watch it without but, the expectations. What you about to say? Uh, no, I was you you can't you can't but. We should. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. I, we can, but we should. I'm not saying watch it without those expectations as much as don't be so quick to jump to the negative on our shit. I think that's the flag I'm I'm waving. You know what I mean? Because the same people who have a problem with it, I will still invite to be like, what's some shit you like? Mm-hmm. Let's start there. Let's start that. before we get to shit that we don't <laughs> like about this movie. What's some shit you like? Uh, uh it was oh. cute. <laughs> It was cute. That's the word I've been using too, and it's not even my vocabulary, but I have no other word for it. That it was, cute. It that was cute. cute. Uh, it was good for the family. Yeah. Uh, I, it, I laughed a lot. I la- that's the thing. It had some I laughs. laughs. I, laughed. I, laughed. I, laughed. I did. I laughed. I, laughed. I, laughed. I ain't saying I it, was, it was unfunny. It didn't tickle my yeah. raunchy funny bone, no. but it tickled a funny bone uh, yeah. a couple times. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like, I, I said the costumes and beautiful, uh, costumes. Like, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful costumes, beautiful costumes, especially when we was in the moon. Beautiful gowns. Yes. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. But we mean that sincerely. Like, yes. I think no, she I did too. And she said it honestly. Beautiful, beautiful gowns. <laughs> I like the, uh, de-aging technology. 
I'm, oh, was, yeah, genetics. It was you. Yeah, it was dope. Genetics? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm I mean, you know, for the flashbacks. You know? I no, like, I, I like no, Arsenio's. No, no, no. I'm kidding. I just like that it was you. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, you didn't like Eddie's? Fuck no. Oh, but that wow. not on the negative. Positive. I liked uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, J- J- oh, we talked. Who? Cool. You don't remember the man? That name? guy, Jermaine Fowler. Johnson. Yeah, this oh, is his Jermaine name, Fowler. Jermaine Fowler. Yeah, Jermaine Fowler. Yeah, I like I liked him a lot. In this. this is um. I've only I've only really liked him in like two things, but I was like he really. I've only really seen him one. in like two things. Yeah. Okay. Word. I've only yeah. Like, fair enough. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those other things. Uh, uh, sorry to bother you. Yeah. Sorry okay. to bother. You. I liked him in that. Mm-hmm. Question um, is, is the other thing that episode of RuPaul's Drag Race? Did y'all see him in that? No. I didn't see him in that. Okay. No, no, I didn't. There's oh man, there's something else. I had to look it up the last time. But there's only one other thing I seen him in that I didn't like. Okay. But um yeah, uh those elements about his oh, performance I like. I, I like uh I like Leslie Jones a lot. I dug this. Leslie Jones in this. The people often give her a lot of bullshit. The whole mo I I dug okay, I don't know if we're if I can go into this, but I, I dug the uh, the moment uh, when we're at, I guess, the, the wedding party at these past, like the prince's um, exam and, or, or test and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And like all the family members are kind of getting together, like Simi and Tracy Morgan are kind of getting together. Uh, Leslie Jones and uh, Sherry Headley are kind of, you know, bonding. Are you good at these because, names? Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, like, I, I just, I dug that moment. Like, all that stuff, like, worked. I was like, well, you know what? Most times for me, it's like, sometimes you, you can finish really strong or, and have, like, a hard, you know, takeoff. But it's like, as long as you can finish really strong, like, I, I dug, you know, sort of the, I guess, the actors and the chemistry that they had with everyone. I dug the chemistry between the actors, especially Fowler and Eddie Murphy had really great chemistry. Leslie okay. had great chemistry with everybody. I felt like this movie du- um, like played to a lot of her comedic beats well. Yeah, um, I agree. You know, I, I'll agree with that. Well, I like that Tracy Morgan is still working after after such an accident that left him paralyzed and possibly not able to work for a while. Um, this so, ain't even the first um, thing he's done since then. It's not the first thing he, no. he's done. No, I'm just saying that he, uh, just seeing him still working. Um, and that's one reason why I like seeing a lot of these people, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like most of the cameos and most of the people we saw, I was just happy to see black greats mm-hmm. just on my screen. Absolutely. That I was just great. Lunel, I, was like, yeah. I love seeing Lunell. Lunell, Lunell yeah. popped up. I was like, Lunell. man. Like, so I was like, I, I like some people didn't like the cameos, but I was a fan of the cameos. I didn't honestly. like all the cameos. I like the, the, the cameos given what, what I realized what this movie was trying to be. Right. When I was like, if I was to look okay. at this movie as something fresh, no, because I think because that's another thing I said off of Mike. Dog, like the first movie was a lot more sincere. This was a lot more self aware, and um, it this movie is so self aware that it has all these cameos. You know what I'm right, saying? But, but these, and it's these, I, in, the, in the original movie they weren't cameos. These were just actors. Yeah, getting roles. And that's what I'm yeah, saying. But that's yeah. and that's See, what, that, but, that's but, the difference. But that's the difference for me. That's the difference. That's what I'm saying. When I look at all these cameos, I don't I don't count it against the movie because this movie already over the top is telling me we're more concerned with celebrating the last movie than with being it's oh. a new thing. But some yeah. of those cameos... All right. So, yes, you yes. know what I mean? So <laughs> that celebration of cameos is why... Yes. I, and, and they use it as a joke later to set up their big punch, their big quote-unquote Randy Watson cameo in the end. So it's almost like, oh, you were, you were kind of trolling us I, with these cameos anyway to set up for your final joke. So, okay... Also, in story, we're not going negative. Your face looks negative. No, no, no. no. I, I don't know if I don't know. I, I don't know what he doesn't like about the ending. But I want to say that I thought that Randy Watson's entrance at the end was oh that on was point. Was I, oh, that wasn't I, it. I, oh, okay, yeah, well, no, no, yeah, I thought it was the no, most. Okay, he, he was saying positive things. Real positive. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. on the negative. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah no. So, oh, I, so he was saying Randy Watson's <laughs> entrance great. was great. Uh-huh. I, I, I love seeing Randy. That that was one of the callbacks that I enjoyed. Me too. Another callback that I enjoyed was um the subtle one of him mopping when he had that. Um, scene yeah, with John Amos. I fucked was, with that callback yes, more that. than most of the callbacks. That was one of my favorite ones because it was it was way more okay. subtle instead of like beating me over the head with hey remember coming to America right, one right, you know what exactly. I mean yeah, that one, um, there were a few of those that were real subtle like like at the at the very end um, kind of when Randy Watson was performing and he turns to his new queen and he has something like you. You know, give all this up, and she looks and she's like, nah, which is exactly what Lisa said at the end of the very last movie, yep. which is a subtle callback. Yeah, you, um, you it's have smooth. to know the movie like that <laughs> to mm-hmm. know that. So, mm-hmm. those callbacks and cameos, so to speak, I really love. I like the Trevor Noah cameo. I did too. Yeah. But and that one actually made sense one. by comparison to a lot of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I like the Michael Blackson cameo. Yep, that's yeah. another one that made well, sense. Well, yeah. 
Okay. Now, it made sense for me because yeah. they had a lot of up and it, coming uh, comedians in the first one just doing one lines and stuff yes. like that. I, okay, you know what? And I, I laugh out loud at Rick Ross even though it's for the wrong reasons. Oh, oh okay. God. I was about to say, man, was, it, that was the one time the where Rick I just yelled out, "Just kill him! Just get him off! Get him out of here!" He's terrible. Watching him struggle with that African accent made my oh, night. Oh my! God. I can't <laughs> believe they left it in. I'm t- I would have told Rick Ross, "I'm sorry, I know, me but too. you're me on too. the cutting room floor." Me too. Hell thank, no! Thank you for for use of your home. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, mate. Oh. General Ez, we have just been informed. King Akin has returned from America with a son. Remember that big funeral scene? Now that was hilarious. How James Earl Jones wanted his funeral before he died, while he that's still was alive, like, like, so he I could like die at the funeral. And <laughs> and and that's why a lot of these big cameos happen. But under the context of it, we're about to send off the king of Zamunda, uh-huh. this big kingdom. Yeah, you gonna have salt and pepper and Gladys Knight and all them people there, man. Like on that on that pretense, I'm gonna give them that, bro. Was there a problem with them having salt and pepper and involved? Some people felt like we're gonna get to when we get to the negative, okay. but some okay. people had problems with the cameos, uh, it being a cameo heavy joint. And I'm saying, oh, okay, in, okay, in okay, that okay. moment, look at him yeah. shaking. He's really. <laughs> <here. laughs> Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was thinking CDC on the audio. Okay. But um, under the pretense of if this is this huge funeral for this great king, uh-huh. I'll I'll give those special guests yeah. a reason because okay, within your story, you made that make sense. Yeah. So and mm-hmm. I love that whole scene. I thought that was a cool scene. And that's another thing too. Um, people have problems. Some people have problems with the musical numbers. I didn't. I think maybe going back to my um, Spike Lee watching or some shit, I have no problem with seeing black people singing and dancing. Oh, I love it. I love you know a musical. I'm a, I, musical. I, I, I'm a musical theater kid. You yeah, know? yeah, I, yeah. I, I love a musical. I love okay, seeing okay. the fucking, like, the steps, the step show type right, aesthetics of black culture yeah. being thrown in. Yes. I love the choreography and all that. Oh, I, I was, I, you know, I'm thinking, okay, some bliggity black shit. Because like, anytime we're throwing out culture in motherfuckers' face and we're not, we'll be unapologetic about it, I'm always going to raise the fist. Okay. I like that wow. um, that uh, the black uh, woman at the end singing "To Be Loved." She was apparently one of the contestants or winners of Sunday's Best. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, so that was the okay. Yeah, I was like, I don't know that I really liked. Okay, cool. I I, he I was agree. going in his brain thinking about what, what music I was going to all the musical like. numbers, and that's one of the likes. I love uh, Wesley okay. Snipes. I love the Wesley Snipes. Oh, all, his, all his entrances uh, was, was musical numbers. <laughs> he came in with a whole fraternity full of niggas doing. Hey, that's that's what we get it, baby. <laughs> Like, are y'all fighters or on, like man. a dance troupe? Prince Akeem. Oh, look at you. <laughs> so, That's what I said. Chirac. Uh, Dolomite in this has me looking at Wesley Snipes on a comedic level of just he seems to be having so much fun yeah. in the twilight of his but career. But also, I remember him doing stuff like uh, Two Wong Fu. So when even though but he, he stop himself up, well, yeah. But I, I feel like for me, him doing that was enough because he had already set himself up as what well, a big macho action star. And then this is him, like, a whole, like him, him not taking himself super so seriously, seriously. And, it, it and doing looking, so well at it. Yes, and that's know. my whole thing, because we got glimpses of his comedic chops in the right. past, uh-huh. but then he really, like, we became either, you either know him for the serious Wesley Snipes actor mm. or the serious action star. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He, he was, like, stone-faced, mean mug, either but, like, Blade or, Blade or uh-huh. just random shit, you know what I mean? He, yeah. I, 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 I love him in, uh, so the one with Sylvester Stallone, the Demolition Man, like, I, that yeah, was a night. Nice, right. You feel me? But, yeah, like, before a decade, Decades, he was Wesley Snipes. So, like yeah. you just said, to see him yeah, not that taking man himself some, some prison time, not he ain't that serious? Ain't that serious, baby? I enjoyed seeing Fancy again, being the leader of the. Oh, Rose Gustav Bass. Beauvais, absolutely, yes, yeah. I, I, and I she and she remained beautiful. It ain't like she even fell out of the spotlight. She's currently on one of these housewife shows, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. she's still on, and she has a podcast. Yeah, yeah she, 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 she still keeps relevant. herself. Keeps herself. Oh wait, pause. I can't believe I forgot my favorite. The oldest daughter, Mika, gorgeous, fierce ass. Oh yeah, uh, her, man. Yeah, what? her. Eddie oh, Murphy's Kiki daughter, Lane is the, her name. The, Kiki yeah. Lane. I, I know that actor name. I learned hers. <laughs> Kiki Lane. You heard me? She killed it. She killed it in every way. I'm trying to think of something more. Po- if I have any other positive things before I, uh, before I jump to all the other thoughts I have. Um, <laughs> all the other thoughts. We just call them disconnects. I'm okay, a, good because this this what that's a great way to put a disconnect because I want to just speak on the level of criticism, dog. Okay. I think there's a difference <laughs> um, between 
The difference between hating on something to me and giving it an actual critique is one where you're coming from with it. You know what I mean? Are you coming from a place of like gen genuine? I want to love it, but I might have had a disconnect, or I have a freaking degree, or I got an experience, or like I know this topic enough that okay, I'm literally giving it a critique based off of this is how it came through my lens. Because mm -hmm. some people have merit. If you if you if you directed a bunch of films, or if you got this and that, you know what I mean? I'm a your critique is actual a critique. Well, I think everybody's critique has merit. Uh, it just comes from a different lens. But even if you are not an expert or haven't consumed a whole lot of black art, but you're a consumer, period, this is made for you. You know, so like... That's a different thing, but I'm a, that's true. That's true. But I'm going to just say this about hating. To me, hating is when you just being contrary for the fuck of it. Mm -hmm. You already was expecting not to like it, so you already had a lens of negativity, so you just think you're watching it mm -hmm. with the lens of just trying to prove yourself right about it being shitty. Uh, even, you know what I mean? You, know, you didn't like Eddie Murphy or any movies. You already have vendettas or biases you know, against you know, the people like from jail. I never liked Eddie Murphy movie. Okay, well, you can go into this one thinking, you know, I told you I hate Eddie Murphy movie. <laughs> See? <laughs> or know. nothing that you're saying even, like... It, can even help the movie or right. or so some people come with their negatives because what they thought it should be, it isn't, mm -hmm. so now they mad. And it's like, well, but what about what it is? Mm -hmm. Or what they want to do is all I'm saying. Yeah. You feel me? So that's, um yes, we can get into all our other thoughts like disconnects okay, or yeah. where things may have lost us or et cetera, et cetera. What y'all talking about, man? Because of course the thing can't ain't you know ain't nothing perfect, you know what I mean? I I feel I felt like okay so there's a different like sort of pace and tone to the original movie which pace is know, a funny word here that's I, a word pace like I know like I I know that every like this film intended to kind of like kind of go this this pace or this race you know in terms of how they hit you with everything but like there was, I felt like there was just so much time taken in in the beginning and this time we just kind of hitting everything. We just touching it, touching it. Like, hey, you remember this? Remember this? Remember this? Remember this? Cool, 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 cool. Remember that girl you used to hop around the bar? Right? Okay, cool. There she is. Boom. Bang, 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 bang. There she going. She going now. All right. Now we about to go Wesley Snipes. He about to walk in like a pimp. Um, but uh, I, I, I just, I don't know. Um, I, I, I wanted, I wanted it. I felt like this, it could have used like maybe, I don't know, 30 more minutes, 20 more minutes to kind of take its time and um, kind of work through a couple of things. Um, I wonder if that was start off and, there. And I, I wonder if that was the edit, or of that was the script. Because you know sometimes the script Fair was enough. just written that tight, or sometimes they might have had thirty more minutes, but they thought and they needed to cut right. it down or whatever. Because yeah, that's like I enough. said, we, I watched this the first time DC came through, and that was one of the main things he was even saying. As I watched this, like things just kept. Like we learned this, like you just said, everything happened I mean, so fucking fast. And, and yeah. that barbershop is the source of all information, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> that no, that, but that was a perfect example. Like in the barbershop, he walked in, they walked in. Them niggas, them old ass men didn't even take a second to think. They instantly remembered him from 30 years ago. Right. They instantly knew where to find his son. They instantly mm. knew, like everything just happens like, whoa, like it was. Then when he came back to the barbershop, he asked the, the, the dudes if he had seen his son. Yeah, he was here like today he with some him. girl. She wanted to get a job. Here. Here. Oh, yeah, they finna get married. You know where? Yeah, over there. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> Dude. New York City is not that small. Dude, bro. they Queens. had the coincidences on coincidences, Queens. boy. That's what I was thinking. I was telling myself that, but I'm like, I don't know. And, and, and certain shit, and I'm going to say this, too, before I get get too deep in, in the sauce. Go ahead. Okay. Certain <laughs> shit, we, we, we do forgive for comedic license. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. The All tone right, of this, enough. it don't take itself that seriously. No That's way. why when we watch this, we're still entertained because uh -huh. we it didn't make it, it didn't give us the, the a reason to take any of that too seriously. But he's he talking about the pace. But no, no, you're which, right. But when yeah, it comes to pace, which, that's the truth. Which made us disconnected from. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm not taking nothing away from. I agree with everything you're saying. <laughs> but I just want to throw that caveat in there yeah. of like this is this is because this is a comedy because we brought the thing about the African nations and Africans being mad and one of the main things people were saying. Was loud, yo. This is a comedy. Well, even for yeah, right. But even for the original one, there were like uh, Pan African and African people who were offended by the way that I mean, some people were proud to see the, uh, African depicted in such an opulent, beautiful country. But there were some people, and there were people who downright didn't like the movie, and for and for multiple reasons. And I and I feel like they have merit. But my only thing, and I'm saying is this: all those people you had all those years and all those decades to feel that way about coming to America. One, 
why the fuck you gonna even put on Captain America too? No, 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 no. Okay. That's, That's all I was saying. Like in the first movie, I, I maybe we maybe they never actually shot a frame in Africa, but I felt like <laughs> we were in Africa. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? This every step of the way felt like Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like at no at no point did I ever feel like. We had crossed any borders mm. and gone to any foreign Even the scene with the, with the, the, the zebras and the <laughs> lions. <Yeah. laughs> that was definitely uh, like, Carol Baskin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was Carol Baskin. <laughs> but yeah. But no, like, that's it, it, felt like Eddie, it felt like an Eddie Tyler Perry movie on some it, shit, it though. It certainly felt like okay. it. Oh, did. Man. It, uh, this felt like a better is. Tyler Perry movie, but it had some Tyler Perryisms about yes, it that indeed, I can't lie it about. It did. And uh, speaking of Tyler Perryisms, I'm so disconnects. Uh, <laughs> most of the musical numbers for me were disconnected. Um, I right. get why you would have Gladys Knight and Salt and Pepper and Invo <laughs> performing because that's also a callback to the time. Like they were possibly some of the biggest stars of that first, time too when the first movie came mm-hmm. out. Yeah, you know um, uh, the updated lyrics like Gladys Knight singing "Leaving on the Midnight Train to, to, <laughs> the, to the Moon." The, I felt like took away from the regal classiness <laughs> of having Gladys Knight. In your movie, bro, and I was like, but that's more of yeah, them telling me it's, it's, it's a silly ass movie. Slapstick. Yeah, it's, more slapstick. it's silly shit. And speaking oh, yeah. of speaking okay. of yes. musical numbers, yes, musical numbers, bro. Um, <laughs> when he joined in the song with Tiana Taylor, I <laughs> didn't have to. That's was uh, that's when he crossed the line. Of course, now it was High School Musical. Because <laughs> uh, truthfully, son, and I like musicals. Yeah, I do. I love them. School Days. One of my favorite movies. <laughs> Side when you boy. you say when I first saw your boy hit the, oh, the that was Prince shit. song I that's a, that's a Prince song okay <laughs> so I I was so joked out at the old African man hitting up, that high uh-huh. notes that, <laughs> that was slapstick <laughs> I was joke I laughed out loud that at the funny. nerve of this old that was, that was funny because of, that was another callback you thought he was finna hit the she's your queen yeah yeah, yeah 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 it was the same but thing then, but then he goes into something else that was like okay shit yes you yes know, but then so but then and then even Tiana singing was a little corny but you know what. I'll accept it. I'll allow it. But you're absolutely right. Like, yeah, like yeah. I was that, right on the bridge was, when she was, started that was, singing. That was like, y'all losing me. Like, y'all, <laughs> y'all are finna lose me. And then when they hand me the mic, when he jumped to the mic, right, you're like, right, ah, right. you fucked up. Yeah, yeah. right. totally, now I'm totally disconnected. But right. that was for the kids. <laughs> that's one of those moments to me that that's what reminds kids me of. Kids in the fucking song. She was talking about. <laughs> Hold on, I got it. 23 <laughs> positions in a one night stand. That that was not for the kids. It's just, yeah, it's. I don't know, man. DC just I, said, DC just said, fuck them kids. Yeah, fuck them kids. Yeah. Fuck them kids. Not, not for that scene. Now with Pussy Pop and Tiana Taylor, that's not for them. <laughs> she came out of a, a big old robe to reveal something very <laughs> <laughs> No. Um, this felt like a parody of coming to America at certain points. When we go to Wesley Snipes' compound and those motherfuckers are on the fucking uh, dance Playing dance revolution, use all of them doing shake weights, bro. I'm like, this is like if, if the Wayans brothers got a hold of I thought that's real funny. I'm sorry. I oh, that's real funny. That's real funny. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's acknowledge that. I understand it was corny, though. Why thought it was funny? Yes, Wesley, Wesley's character, General Izzy, his country was called Next, next Door <laughs> because it was next door to Zamunda. I'm with it. 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 So Let's Zamunda was called oh Next Door. Let's go. Uh, but but, but uh. since you brought up um, this being like a Tyler Perry movie, I'm going to talk about what I hated about the end <laughs> of the movie. Oh, Give it to us. Yeah, which, yeah. which was technically another musical number. It was the finale. It has nothing to do with the story, and that, bro. Oh, and you're talking Randy about John Watson. Legend? No, no I'm talking no. about talking about the Soul Train line, where all the where they were at the wedding, all the characters. The classic went, '90s is, trope yes. of the whole cast just having like, a big just like dance. Soul food ended, so everybody, every character had a chance to come down the Soul Train line and oh, do their yeah. thing, and then he everybody came it. together and did the fucking electric slide while it. Randy Watson was on the stage. He hated it. That's so Tyler Perry to me. That's you know, so that's like, that's like how, that's how so, so many black movies in the 90s, 2000s ended with like everybody's like in the kitchen. Oh, turn that up, big mama. And that's when I and go back to, the kitchen like this, this is going through the perspective of 50-some-year-old Eddie Murphy, mm, dog. No. That's why this is, that was the dad no. joke. This was the dad yeah, joke coming to America. That, that, because even, even that scene, because that made me look at that when there's that scene where um, they're eating the burger and the, the fake burger that was made of grass. Uh-huh. That to me is his 50-year-old. 
perspective joke like, on oh, that's how these young, these young people, are. Yeah, these young people are concerned with climate change. Is that, you know what I mean? He had a few of those and then we go, oh, this, you, this, this, this is your commentary, Eddie. So that was him not even realizing that that's not... That's the joke of the on fleet. They had the on fleet joke, the which was funny. Joke. I thought it was funny. I, did not think they were I funny. thought it was funny. I liked a lot of the corny shit, I guess. No. But like the on fleet joke <laughs> happened. But that's the same thing. That's the personified. That was pure. Eddie. He thinking on fleet still popping with these dance numbers and shit, and it's not. I, First of all, I saw the incoming with the you know the uh, oldest princess oh, e- eventually becoming the crown princess. So, so you became... were here when I said it out loud at like minute ten. <laughs> like oh, as soon yeah. as you see her be the strong yeah, black woman, right. you know, okay, she's gonna be the queen. Oh, yeah, she's the queen then. We, we, we knew we You know, knew. but 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 the most cliche ending you could do is all the, the dance. characters. Still back to the dance. Still back to the dance. Still fucking electric slide. He said, oh, he said, I said, now you're playing with my intelligence, Eddie. I, <laughs> I accept the ABC ass story. Yeah, bro. But the but soul God chain. damn it, Eddie, you better not end it with a fucking soul train. You did it. God damn it. Uh, I was not the only one. Who thought that the oldest daughter was like a part Fine of their as own? Fuck. Oh, no, sorry. no. The, uh, <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, no, but, okay. So that she was a part of the children's own personal door melange or whatever. They, they, like, they did seem like she was, that. Okay. She was dressed different than them. Like all of them were kind of, and she was like ready to go all the time. I'm like, yeah. Did anybody else? She was just a bad bitch, bro. She was. Any, any low key sexual tension between her and um, Lavelle's character? Yeah. I felt like they they really needed to up the the sexual tension between him and the barber because yeah. okay was, now they it was almost like a, it was almost like a Simba Nala moment when they were when they were training for the thing and she was best in them. Let me get into my disconnect thing. Here's, here, 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 Google. Okay, now we're into my disconnects. Uh-huh. One, I did not believe that that barber character would go for his ass. I did not believe that romance. <laughs> for them to get, get married. In three weeks, in two weeks, have a long, I did, for them to jump some marriage and all that. They, they did he's not well, see he's her a doing prince. Because, because she poor. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah I'm right. like, he's a prince. But you know what I'm saying? The, the personalities, I, I I didn't feel them. Like you said, I felt oh, him and his yeah, sister enough. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Chemistry yeah. wise. Like, they going to kiss. I know. Yeah. Why do you have to get married? Yeah, like, yeah, we, we, like, we moving to America and we want to get married right now. Because because that's the thing. It's going to be able to Because that's the thing. The marriage was because the marriage is a moon was because we unite in the kingdoms to get uh-huh. away from war. And and Why is he had given him one week to, to do this before he did whatever his So thing that was, was the right. timetable of that marriage. Mm-hmm. Why are you forcing this marriage? You're and, American. And Queens, right. You can get married anytime you and want. want. To, you, you, know? just, you just brought your lady from Zamunda. Why don't you and your lady just kick it in Queens? Why the fuck? Why are we rushing to a marriage aside from plot reasons? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's uh, fair. You know what? I don't have an argument for that one. No, me either. Me either. We, we, talked about, we talked about how the pacing was, the pacing was a disconnect. And yeah. that that whole part is a disconnect for me, dog. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he comes back to to America straight to Queens, straight to the barber shop. <laughs> like, hey, have you seen my, have you seen that boy? Well, no, actually, when, when he came in, he said, hey, we heard you find your son. <laughs> 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 we all caught up already. What's up? I'm looking for a well. He was here today. <laughs> Let me give you a small one. Let me give you a small one, son. When the movie <laughs> start, right? They show um the kingdom like how and, and, and shit, right? And there's this yeah. part where they show different pictures of, of of things that they have framed in their house. There's a framed picture of them two niggas from the barbershop. Now, if you yes. haven't seen them niggas in 30 years. How do you have a framed picture of them how they look now in your house? Right. (laughs) In your house. And them niggas acting like they have had no. Like, so. Because they were like, last time he was here. (laughs) 30 years ago. (laughs) Like, so many things did not develop on screen to say there was a two hour movie. Mm -hmm. When they got to that argument between the brother and the sister, he's like, I know you don't like me. When the fuck did we see her not like you, bro? And she said, she talk? said, I never, I never said that out loud. And of course, she got up from the the, the dinner table. I just don't let her see she had, bro. Okay, is that the only time? And she didn't even look at him when she left. She, she, well, she, she wasn't no, very I looked friendly at, I just in, now. The, in the training montage. She just, she stood away. Uh, she didn't like give him wait. no shit. She just, she just was away. Like the the way, put like I this. I feel like she, she showed gotta, it. She never said it. Yeah, it's under, it's it. under the. I didn't see it enough on my screen. But teams, I'm, a, I guess. I'm still, I'm still. It was agree. under, okay. it was agree. underdeveloped. There was a, there was a whole lot of things that uh, things that didn't. I got a couple though, screen. but that was <laughs> underdeveloped. The mm-hmm. next one, um, Tracy Morgan and Arsenio Hall, we're friends now. Yeah, nigga, when? Yeah, what man. made y'all become friends? You just was giving them shit, and then all of a sudden you decide to be friends. Uh, yeah. the moms. Um. um
It went from Lisa being like, what the fuck this woman doing here? And Leslie being out of fish out of water situation to, to Leslie rocking a dress at one time. So here's a gift. Now let's get drunk together. If anything, some should have made them get drunk together earlier. Then they build that chemistry. So then later when she gifts her with something, it makes sense. I got to see it develop. There are so many of these things that I didn't get to see develop on screen. You just gave me the payoff so and then tried to play catch up. And I'm like, no, that's not how any of this goes. Uh -huh. Even Leslie Jones's character in general, dog, because they had to make a choice and they didn't make the, a, a, a full choice. When he decided okay. to bring his mom, we needed more hijinks from her because she's part of the fish out of water shit. You feel me? She was she's the two. She's and, the two and in coming to America. Because that's the thing too, when you look at Best Man, mm. right? The sequel, they knew how to keep all of their storylines and characters and relevant. Them properly, yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. This one had this big cast of people, but people got lost in the sauce. Mm. You hear me? Yeah. And it was like, well, we didn't need all these people if we're gonna get that lost in the sauce with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um Jermaine Fowler. Um, he's a cool lead to me, but I'm um, from from scene to scene, I don't know. It's like it's like yeah. I like him in certain scenes. It's like yeah, one scene I, like I looked at and I like, not like you did that, bro. And yeah. other scenes I'm like, okay, you're pushing, you're doing too much. Right. Why are you yelling at me? And <laughs> one question I had was, is he a stand-up comedian? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because he has that vibe when he speaks sometimes. He speaks sometimes as if it's he's as always he's setting up a joke. joke. Uh -huh. And sometimes that works, and sometimes that's charming for the the you know the movie well, character. It's a comedy. I mean it, because you know, because we, we we know this as students of the game, dog. Like um, most um, comedic um, um, stand-up comedians that become comedic actors, there's a certain not even just comedic actors, actors in general have these a certain aesthetic, a certain character that they present when they're on screen. Uh -huh. You feel me? Like one pe one thing that people often gave Eddie was he knew who his was and he didn't defer from it. Um, too much in his early stages, like he he stayed strong. Like he was he like later on he was able to do the Norbits and the shit. But early in his career, he was like, I have my kind. I'm like I'm almost like a straight man that's funny or some shit because he he always had his swag and his suaveness and his strong black manness. But he still was funny and shit. Like Chris Tucker, he'd allow <laughs> Like we know these different tropes. Mm -hmm. He seems like he's trying to find his. He don't know what it is fully yet. But he's trying to find it. Well, and I'm watching his development in this movie. I think that his delivery and his energy is similar to what we saw in um, Sorry to Bother You. I think that he might have he might have found it. It may just be a disconnect for you. Because to me, it seems... It seems okay. So He's likable, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's I, the I main agree, thing that works for him. I agree. He's I, not annoying. He's a likable guy. Mm, he's good looking. Um, uh, okay. He... <laughs> <laughs> we look. Let me look. We, we, we look at him now. He's fairly symmetrical in the face. Um, That's a good looking yeah, woman that just popped she's up. She's beautiful. Yeah. She, you can't put yeah. him next no, to her to ask me to talk about right, beauty, bro. You're right. You're right. But right. right. <laughs> well, keep going. What you say? What you say? On screen. Like, on screen. He looks good. You know. He, yeah. He does have that delivery. That's. Um, he does stand up and and comedy a lot, mm -hmm. and to me, I that's the disconnect was when he was like uh, the, the more emotional mm -hmm. scenes, you know, him talking to the barber, mm -hmm. you know, like when she cut his thing off and I, at first when he cut his, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that scene went went from like A to Z so quick. I think that at one point he was they was giggling and then he put the chair on. I was like, no. I'm tired of this. I was like, yeah, wait, yeah. Wait, didn't y'all, when y'all just. He had a few moments like that where he went from zero to 100. And yeah, I'm like, why did. are you yelling at he me did. right now, he bro? Did. Did. You did not build up. Yeah, the did. last scene was like, no, dad, fuck you, basically. Like, okay, calm down. When he first found out, he was like, you gotta get out of here. Like, I was like, bro. When, when the, the Africans first came to his mama house and they was like, we want to take you to Africa. He was like, no, I'm Jermaine Fowler. I'm old man. Like, <laughs> okay. Bro. And then the money falls out the briefcase. Oh, okay. It's like it's, it's, it's like at times he falls into, and th this is some like technical actory bullshit right here, right? Uh, in scripts, yeah. you see an exclamation point. Mm -hmm. And, and the, yeah. the rookie actor will think that anytime you see an exclamation point, yes. that means to yell. Yeah, right. When exactly. really that exclamation point just means Energy punch it with was, something. Yeah. You can punch it with being loud. That can work. But you can also, there's a quiet anger you yeah, can come exactly. with as well. Or maybe it's not even anger. There's so many ways they just want you to punch it with something. And so, and I feel like he read exclamation point and he was like, it's time to go off. Mm. This is the point where they want me to get loud, y'all. Or like if it's time to be emotional, it's like he had this emotional. It's like I just see him still putting the leading man act together because it seems like he's been a sidekick on screen for a minute. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? So okay. this was his time to be get his lead man on. And he didn't do a bad job. It's just I can see. 
I'm seeing he gonna he, he gonna grow into it. Yeah. Yeah. If he gets more opportunities, yeah. and I hope he do, because I go he yeah. don't know, you know, nigga trying to get it in early. Eddie's still Eddie, man. He's still like great at what he does, dog. Like I was excited to stand. The one part of my expectations That's did so come from I really dug Dolomite. I think he did a, a great job yes, in Dolomite. So if I had any expectations, I'm, it was hoping that he could recapture that magic and bring it to this. Okay. One thing that did come, strike stand out to me as this movie progressed, me watching it now a third time is um, uh, Prince Akeem a bitch. Yeah. So, this all yeah, is about him right. being scared of Wesley. Yeah. And Wesley just in your face disrespected you the whole movie. And Every time remember, we see him. I remember him, been being, a... him being that kind of person in part one. Like he, in the, in the opening scene, him and Simi did have their little oh. battle thing going. Yeah. He was backflipping. Why are you a bitch now? Yeah, but I, okay. Why is Prince Akeem a bitch? Right, right. And the end, Wesley Snipes tried to kidnap his daughter, tried to kill his daughter in the fight, and then he get to be at the be party the dancing like, the soldier. <laughs> like, like, he was an enemy. But, um... Him and his little, his little backup dancers. I would have I would have enjoyed <laughs> yeah. it more if, um, him and Wesley had this passive-aggressive speech with each other. Where, because Wesley had it. Wesley kept on telling him some under ass shit. But after a while, Wesley also said, like, I'm hate to have to go back to plotting your death. He was saying that yeah, to that his face. Death. You know, but yeah, and, but and, you and, know, in the beginning, listen, he man. was, it was very like, he said, uh, better is to be tied by. by blood in marriage than be divided by blood and war. And war. 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 And I, I would have, I wish if they, their, their, their chemistry would have been, they both say, like, Underhanded yes, shit to each other yeah. all so the time, like, yeah, and then we and then we can always ducking, like, okay, yeah no because he just kept ducking. Yeah, right, right. I, and, and then, and then maybe let's give uh, his wife something to do in this movie. Maybe his wife is the voice of reason to be like, Nah, Keem, I know you want to go fight, but da da. Like you know what I mean? Right. Like because she really had to say she was the queen to, the, the, of his world in the first movie. She was still a side plot device that just came up out of convenience to talk to give him that speech he needed at the time he needed it. But for the most part, she. To do shit, yeah. you hear me? So it's like maybe, yeah. like we could have gave him some balls that that was sometimes too big for his britches, and like maybe the women could have, because that would have been like a natural place to be, and I could have also gave Leslie something to do. I don't know. There's a lot of things we could have got to do, and what if Wesley had a crush on Leslie? That would have been hilarious that too. He would have been shooting his oh. shot the whole That'd movie. Funny. So then, as and what them two getting married was the big marriage oh, wedding or something? That would have been funny, bro. That would have been funny. Yeah, that's a part three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But I will say this, even with his flaws, there's something to be said for a movie to a black movie with black faces to not end in trauma yeah. or tragedy like, or negativity. We just got us a little cute little corny movie. You know what? <laughs> like, I, I appreciate it for existing, man. I like having movies where we just on some positive kick. You it feel was cool me? For what it was. For what it was, you heard me. Um, I do not want to say that you cannot critique like you don't have to love everything black, but I still would yeah. always say give everything black a shot. We owe it to ourselves. Ourselves. We have decades of media that we're told is great because it's white. You feel me? I believe in the bias of black people to support things because they're black because we have a lot of catching up to do. You feel me? A lot of these things that are supposedly great, it's only great because the majority of white people own the all own the shit and they said it was great. And then they tell us that it's great and now we have to accept that it's great. While we got a lot of great shit in our canyon that should be heralded way more and more but we didn't have the power positions to push it. I always bring up shit like juice. I always bring up shit. Like there's so much shit that I could just list off that's like, man, no, this is like great material, great material that... You, you can do hood shit like Godfather, and all Godfather and Goodfellas is white people hood shit, but that get to be classic, you feel me? So no, I'ma look at this shit, and I'ma still have my gripes, I'ma still see the flaws, I'ma still see whatever's up with it, but I'm not gonna hate on it, I'm not gonna say it's trash, I'm not gonna tell fellow black people not to support it, you hear me? I think you, I think you do yourself a disservice, not at least watching it, to have your own opinion. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Have your own opinion please, at the very please, please least. Watch it. Do watch it. Do watch it. It was cute as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a